Hello again! So, for this video, I'm going to be following up my last tutorial on WP SuperCache plugin, and I'm going to be talking about the CDN functionality of that plugin. So, a CDN is a content delivery network, and its purpose is to offload some of the work from your server to an outside server that can display the static content quicker. And static content would be like your JPEGs, your CSS files, or maybe even your JavaScript files. And what that does is it allows it to get a quicker response time and load your page faster. So, let's get right to it. Alright, so we'll start in the plugins panel. And if you look here, I've already got the two plugins that we're going to be using to sync to the CDN. Uh, they're already installed here, but uh, the two plugins are WP SuperCache, which I covered in my, my previous tutorial, and CDN Sync Tool. Now, CDN Sync Tool is not viewable through WordPress.org, so what I'll do is I'll provide a GitHub link to the plugin. And uh, what you'll have to do to install this is you'll have to go to Add New click on the upload button and select the file that you download from GitHub because what this this uh, plugin needs to do is be, uh, manually be installed. So let's go back to our plugins panel. Now if you look here the CDN sync tool is in the settings panel and if you click on CDN sync tool it will take you to the admin panel for that plugin. So now what we need to focus on is the CDN options. If we click here on CDN options, you're going to see that it gives you uh, a few uh, options as far as what CDN you can use. It allows you to use uh, Amazon, you can do it through FTP. In my case, I use cloud files. And, uh, and what it's asking for right below is the host name of the CDN. And you can get that in your control panel if you uh, have a Rackspace Cloud Files container. And uh, it's going to be the one in the View All Links. You will click on that and it will give you a URL that you will paste in here. Now uh, the username will be your Rackspace username. And you'll click on US or UK depending on where you are in, uh, on planet Earth. <laughs> And, uh, and there's also an API key. If you click on the right, uh, top right-hand corner of your uh, Rackspace control panel, there is an account settings button. When you click that, it'll take you to a page that'll show you your API key. And what you'll do is you'll copy and paste that over here. Now in the container section, what it's asking for is the name of the container uh, that you've created. If you don't have one already created in your cloud files uh, control panel, then just enter in anything and it'll create the container for you. So when you've completed that, you'll click uh, save and test changes and what it'll do is it'll uh, verify that the container exists. If it doesn't exist, it's going to create one for you and then you can start beginning uh, the, the syncing process. Now just for security reasons, I don't have any of this information displayed here for you to view. Now let's go over to the sync tab. This is where you're going to define what is to be synced to your CDN. You can sync your theme files, media files, WordPress files, plugins, or your CSS and JavaScript files. Uh, what you're going to do on your first run, you're going to check this box here, the sync all files even if they are up to date. And uh, what that's going to do is just force everything to resync to the CDN. For some reason it, it thinks that everything's already synced, so you need to reforce it. Uh, and once you've done that, you'll click on the sync button and it will take every one of your files and push them over to the CDN. Uh, and, and I won't do this in the tutorial because it takes a little while. It's going to copy over every single file one by one. Uh, but once it completes, what you're going to want to do is create a C name. Now, the C name, you're going to want it to point to whatever the container URL that you input here is. Uh, so if we click on, this is mine. So this is a, an example of what the URL would look like. So it's going to have a ton of characters and it's going to end with rackcdn.com. The reason I suggest using a C name for that is because uh, when, with social media, if you're sharing to Facebook, Facebook will interpret that URL as spam and it will fail to generate a preview of your post. So it's very important to create a C name. And in my case, I created a C name of cdn.myawesomewordpresssite.com and that C name points to the container. So that would be the host name here. Now if we go to SuperCache, this is where we're going to configure all of the rewrites to happen. So anything that's a JPEG in the WP contents directory, we want that to start pointing to the CDN and no longer point to, the, uh, to your server. So if we click on the CDN tab in SuperCache, you'll have the option to enable CDN support. Now when you check this, 
Uh, you're going to want to in input right here in the offsite URL whatever the C name is that you created to point to your container. So in this case, cdn.myawesomewordpresssite.com and and from there let's look at the include directory section now what this is uh, is it, it tells you to it, this allows you to define what directories to to repoint to the CDN uh, by default it goes with the WP content directory and the WP includes directory so any static files in there that are not PHP files it's going to pull from the CDN now let's say you don't want your JavaScript files to pull from the CDN. Maybe you have some, re some need to pull them straight from the server. What you can do is, uh, if you look here at the exclude if substring, is you can define what files to ignore from the CDN and to pull straight from the server as it is. So in, uh, say you do want to exclude JavaScript, if you enter a comma after PHP and type JS, it will, dot JS, sorry, dot JS, it will ignore any JavaScript files. Now that is all you really need to do to configure the CDN. All you do is click Save Changes, and all of your files will be uh, all of your static files will be pulled from the CDN. Now something important to mention here: if uh, let's go to a page, I'm going to create a new page, and on this page, uh, let's say awesome page, and let's say I want to add a, a media item. Say I want to add something, um, this picture here of a cat. <laughs> so if you look here, this is a, I'm in text view, and it's very important to be in text view uh, because if you look, it will point to, ah, there we go, yeah. So it will point to myawesomewordpresssite.com, and it's important to look at this because what it's going to do is replace that string with the CDN dot my awesome wordpress site dot com so that's that's how that works and if we publish this and we view the page we can see that the URL is and we'll open the image in a new tab we can see that it's now using cdn dot my awesome wordpress site dot com instead of the www dot that's really all there is to it so after you've uh, configured this, it, it pretty much runs itself. Because when you upload files to the media section of WordPress, it'll automatically push those to, the, the, to cloud files or whatever CDN you may be using. And, and that's the great thing about the CDN sync tool. It, it literally syncs your files. And, uh, and the purpose of SuperCache is actually to handle all of the rewriting of, of images. So like your, your uh, uploads, your JavaScript, whatever static, it, it's in charge of rewriting the URL, removing the dub dub dub, and entering in whatever you have defined in the container name in Supercache. Now I can't stress enough the uh, the importance of creating a C name to point to your container because social media sites like Facebook will interpret that long URL as spam and uh, creating a C name is just one way to bypass it so that they understand that it's a legitimate link and will not block the preview from being generated. So if you have any questions on this plugin, please leave a comment below and be sure to subscribe. We'll be making many more of these videos. Later.